All right, today we're going to go into our uh, last lesson for the first half of chapter 11. So we're going to kind of split this into two parts, like we said earlier. And so we talked about circumference, we talked, or circumference of circles, areas of circles, and then arc length and area of sectors. Now we're going to kind of finish up that uh, topic with uh, areas of all polygons. And so before we get into the types of new figures that we want you to calculate area for, I want to just review real quick on this piece um, some of the formulas you should know from previous classes. So if I have a rectangle or a square or whatever other kind of um, problem like this, we always have a base and we have a height, which are the two pieces that are perpendicular to each other. That's a really big thing with height in terms of most shapes. And so for a rectangle, if we remember, the area is just the base times the height. So no matter what the two numbers are, we just multiply them out, base times height, and we get the area of a rectangle. Now, if we do the same thing with a triangle, so for a triangle, there's always a base and then a height, which is always perpendicular again to the actual base. So base and height are always two terms that are two pieces that are perpendicular to one another. And so for a triangle, we have the area is one half times base times height. And so those are basic shapes that you should already know the formulas for, but I wanted to review it just because it might be a while or it might have been a while since you've seen those. Now today we're going to talk about some new shapes. And so these are shapes we've seen before. Rhombuses and kites were from a couple chapters ago. And so as far as rhombuses and kites go, we're going to calculate their area using their diagonals. So if we see the formula here, we're taking the diagonal, uh, the two diagonals from each figure, and we're multiplying together and dividing by two, it's a lot like our triangle process. So when we look at this picture, my diagonal one is this entire diagonal from corner to corner. So I would take that entire length times my other diagonal right here, which goes from corner to corner, and I would then divide that by two. Or if we look in our kite here, we have this diagonal all the way across times this diagonal all the way across, and then we multiply them and divide by two. And so at the bottom here, we have just a quick example, find the area of a rhombus with diagonals four feet and five feet. Well, so if my diagonals are four feet and five feet in my formula, I just take the four times the five, and then I'm gonna divide that by two. And so four times five is 20, divided by two gives me 10 feet squared. When we talk about areas, remember our units get squared. Now, one of the things that might happen in a given problem is when they don't give you the di or diagonals outright, they might do something like this piece here is seven units long and this piece over here is four units and they say find the area. Now, this seven only pertains to this portion of my diagonal. And so if that's the case, I actually need to understand that if that piece is seven, then my opposite piece over here has to be seven same thing for my other diagonal. If one piece is four, the other piece is four. So then if I was going to calculate that area, my two sevens add up to be 14. My two fours add up to be eight. And then I would take that and divide by two. So if they give you the pieces of the diagonals, remember to put them together first. We need the entire diagonal of one times the entire diagonal of the other. And then we divide by two. And as far as the rhombuses and kites, that's it. It's just find the diagonals, multiply them, divide by two. For regular polygons, so when we don't have a rectangle or we do have a triangle where we don't know the height, <clears throat> when we're talking about regular polygons, the way we can calculate area is by using what we call an apothem. And so we're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, let's use blue here since that's what they're using. So we have the apothem right here. Now the apothem <clears throat> is the distance from a center of, the, or of a figure to the outside. So if we look at the picture over to the right here, from the center directly out to the outside of the hexagon here is what we call the apothem. And so we see that the apothem in this case would be line segment PQ. Now an apothem can go anywhere as long as it's from the center to the outer edge. So center to outer edge, all the way around if we need to, to have our six apothems. So anytime we go out to the edge of the circle, or the edge of the hexagon, we're making an apothem. Okay, so the apothem goes from center out to a side. That's going to be an extremely important concept here. The next one 
is called the radius. And so the radius is the distance from the center to the vertex. So if we look in the picture here, those are highlighted in red. So my radius goes from P to M or P to N. And then I can create radii all over by just going out to the corners from the center. And they call it a radius because if you notice, we put a circle around the outside here. And so this circle is just for show. It's not actually part of the picture at all. And it's just showing you that when we go from the center out to the corner, we go out to the edge of the circle, which is why they call it a radius. And so as far as naming a radius, we're just using the uh, same thing as any other line segment. My radius would be PN with the line segment symbol. Now the last thing we're going to talk about here is what we call a central angle. And as far as central angles go, really the only thing we're going to get into with these is just being able to calculate. And so that's the angle formed when two radii are next to each other. So P to M and P to N create two radii that are right next to each other. And so the angle they make, so the angle from one black line to the other here is called the central angle. And so if you look at the bottom here, we tell you how to calculate that. So if I want an, a central angle, like angle MPN here, then that central angle is 360 divided by the number of sides. So since we have a hexagon, we have six sides, that means this angle measure right here would be 360 divided by six or 60 degrees. So one of the things they're gonna ask you in certain problems, and maybe they give you a pentagon. So they give you a regular pentagon, and if we draw two radii in, so two radii next to each other, and they wanna know what is that central angle, you're simply gonna take 360 divided by the number of sides, or in this case, 360 divided by five. And when we do that, we get a central angle of 72. So as far as central angles are concerned, you just need to know how to calculate them. We're not gonna to go too much further in depth with that. You also do need to know how to identify the, or the apothem, and you do need to know how to identify the radius. And so those are two things that you need to be able to identify and name within a given picture, as well as the central angle. So this picture right here is a really important picture that you need to study before the test that we're going to take over this first part, because we're going to ask you to do things like this sometime. Now, once we kind of know what the different pieces are called, we can talk about how to calculate the area of a regular polygon. And so again, I kind of or glossed over this on the last slide, a regular polygon means all sides are congruent and it means all angles are congruent. So when I'm looking at this hexagon, all six sides of my hexagon have to be exactly the same length. And so if it's a regular polygon and we want to calculate the area, so as far as area is concerned, we're going to take the apothem, so this A here stands for apothem, times s, which is going to be the side length. So all we need is one side length of our figure because they're all the same. And then n is the number of sides. So this is the formula you're going to have to know. Now, we're not going to have to memorize. We'll give you this on the test, but you need to know how to plug it in or know how to apply it. So the apothem times the side length times the number of sides, and then we cut it all in half. And so if we look at a couple examples here, if it says find the area of this regular polygon. As we look at this polygon, we have our hexagon. So there are six sides. That's one of the first things we need to know. The next thing is we have the apothem. We're looking at going from the center out to the side. So here's my apothem. And then they even give me a side length over here of seven meters. And so if I'm applying the formula from the last slide, I'm gonna take the apothem three times the side length seven times the number of sides six, and then I'm gonna take that and cut it in half. I'm gonna divide by two. And so if I do that, if I take my seven times three times six, I get 126. <clears throat> and then if I cut that in half, <clears throat> we get an area of 63 meters squared. So when we're doing this regular polygon, we're just plugging into the formula, finding the actual answer, and then make sure you have your units squared. If we look at another one here, again, one of the first things we wanna know is how many sides we have. So here we have an octagon, which means we have eight sides. Again, if we kinda of take note of what's given, they gave us the apothem, so that's 16, so that's our A, and then they even gave us our side length of S right there. <clears throat> 
And so since we have all three pieces that we need, all we do now is go ahead and plug it in. So I'm gonna take my apothem, 16, times my side lengths, five, times my number of sides, eight, and then I'm gonna cut that in half. So when I take 16 times five times eight, and then I take that and divide it by two, we end up with a total area of 320 square inches. And so for a lot of the problems you're gonna see, all you have to be able to do is look at the picture, <coughs> pull out the note or the, the pieces you need. So pull out the apothem, the side length, and the number of sides, and then just plug it in the formula. Now you will run into cases like this next example where they don't necessarily give us everything we need. In this case, as we look at this pentagon, so we do know we have five sides, we'll always know that because of the picture, but we notice that they do give us the apothem right here, so there's my A, but then they don't give me S. There's no side length on the outside. Now what they do for me though, is they give me a radius of eight. So this would be my radius here. Now the reason I, uh, I can work with that is that in this case, if I look closely, I have a right triangle <clears throat> that would allow me to solve for the missing side here. Let's call it X right now. And so anytime we see a right triangle, we should automatically be thinking either Pythagorean theorem or like a sine cosine tangent. In this case, because we have the two sides, we're thinking Pythagorean theorem. And so I need to find the value of X, which means I'm gonna take my X squared, one leg, plus 6.5 squared, the other leg, and set it equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is eight squared. <coughs> and so I'm gonna take this Pythagorean theorem, I'm gonna plug it in my calculator. So in my calculator, I would type in eight squared minus 6.5 squared. And when I hit enter, I get 21.75. And then the next thing I need to do is get X by itself. So I'm gonna take the square root of both sides and so if I take the square root of my answer then, I end up getting about 4.7 if we round to one decimal place, and that's fine if we do that. So my x value is 4.7. Now, the whole purpose of this process was because we need the length of a side. We need this whole length here. Well, since we just said that x is 4.7, that x is half as big as what we actually need. <clears throat> and so if we take that 4.7 and double it, we get a side length of 9.4. And so now I have everything that I need to calculate my area. So if as far as area is concerned, I can take my apothem 6.5 times my side length 9.4 and then my number of sides of 5 and then go ahead and divide by 2. So we just cut that in half. And so if I take 6.5 times 9.4 times 5, and then I take that number and divide by 2, I get a total area of about 152.75, and then there are no units, so we just leave it as 152.75. So with these regular polygons, <clears throat> once we've established the number of sides, we just need to find our apothem, we need to find our side length, and then we just plug the three pieces in and solve for what's missing. And so with that, you should be able to work through the worksheet that you get in class or that you get from Google Classroom. As always, ask questions if you have any or access the answer keys as those become available to help you finish this assignment.